Attention, please. I have an announcement to make that concerns you all. Mrs. Winfield is returning from Europe today. As you all know, that means I shall expect even greater efficiency from the staff. Any one of you who shows a lack of respect or discipline in the performance of duty shall be instantly dismissed. Fix your tie. Uh, yes, sir. It might be better if you'd spend less time trying to make an impression on the maids and more time putting a polish on your boots. Is that a button loose on your tunic? No, sir. Go and sew it on, at once. Yes, sir. Straighten your cap. Your apron needs pressing, and your hair is most untidy. Anything else? For that remark, your wages will be docked. If there are any humorous comments to be made around here, I shall make them. Go and straighten your hair. Well, you're certainly a splendid addition to the staff. Look at your boots. Have you try pressing your trousers? Now, what's this? Oh, <laughs> apparently you think you can eat your soup and have it too. It's only my kindness of heart that keeps a man on here after he's outlived his usefulness. That's all. Dismissed. Finish your German army inspection. Maybe I can have these girls shell a few peas. Are you addressing yourself to me? I ain't addressing nobody else. It's trouble enough trying to get dinner for 16 people tonight without you cluttering up my kitchen with your maneuvers. Why don't you hire a parade ground and get a band? Mrs. Frisbee, I warn you. And I warn you, keep out of my kitchen! <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. This Breakage will cost you something. <laughs> Let me see, six large There's plates. There's something else I'm going to break around here, and it might be your neck. Four small plates, four saucers, and two cups. Shut up. Looking for somebody? Yes, I heard there was a job open as housemaid. Oh, I'm afraid you're too late, honey. All the places have been filled. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I came as quickly as I could. See, I had to walk from the end of the car line. Walk? Yeah. Why, that's a three-mile hike. Why didn't you take the bus from the car line? Well, I, uh, I didn't have the bus there. Oh. Well, come on in. Say, any dame that had walked that far deserves a medal or something. Here, sit down. Oh, thanks. Oh, gee, I'm tired. So am I. Say, it's no cinch around here doing upstairs work and taking Mrs. Winfield's pet poodle for an airing, besides being chambermaid to the silly parrot and three canaries. I wish his nibs had put you on just to help me. His nibs? Oh, that's Roxton, the butler. He does all the hiring and firing around here. Oh, you know, I really need a job. I haven't a cent. Gosh, that's tough. Say, wait a minute. I'll see what I can do. Hello, hello, hello. Who have we here? Hello. You don't mean to tell me you're going to work here? Oh, I hope so. Well, I hope so, too. You know, the maids around here are not much to look at. <laughs> How many maids are there? Five, not counting Madam's personal maid. Oh. How long have you been here? Oh, about a year. It's a nice place, too. That is, if you can get along with his nibs. Is he very difficult? Oh, you won't have any trouble. Not with your looks. Okay, kid, I think I've got it all fixed for you. Oh, you're awfully nice to do this for oh, me. Oh, skip it. Now, remember one thing. In a house like this, the butler thinks he's a king. Treat him like one. All right. Good luck. Close the door. Sit down. You're quite young, aren't you? 
Yes. But that's really no disadvantage. Have you any references? Yes. I see you come from Pleasanton. Yes. How long have you been in New York? About uh, two weeks. Reverend H.J. Trumbly. You work for him? Oh, no. He was a pastor at our church back home. Now, what's this? Pleasanton Business College? I completed a course there in shorthand and typing. <laughs> Do you mean you've never been in service? No, but I, I'm very good at housework. Really, I am. I employ only experienced help. Oh. But uh, in your case, I, uh, well, I suppose I could make an exception. You seem bright. I'm going to start you off as an upstairs maid. Your wages are $75 a month, but you will be paid 60. Do you understand? I allow one evening a week off and every other Sunday. You, you mean I'm hired? I'll give you a month's trial. Thank you. Oh, one thing more. As long as you're in this house, you will be responsible only to me. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And if you make yourself adaptable, She'll get along quite well, I think. Thank you. Hey, hey, wait a minute. How'd you make out? It's all right, but I couldn't work here. That butler, ooh, he gives me the creeps. Hey, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, look, really, I appreciate your trying, but ooh, I can't. Oh, now, relax. Let me tip you off. If you're going in for this sort of work, there's a lot of things you'll have to put up with. But I don't like that man. Who does? Why, his own mother wouldn't speak to him. But don't worry, he won't bother you. I'll run interference for you. Now, what do you say? <laughs> you're awfully nice to do all this for me. Oh, just the Girl Scout at heart. By the way, what are your wages? Well, that's something I didn't understand. He said they'd pay me 75 a month, but that I was to get 60. Oh, sure, you're kicking 15 a month to him. That's his cut. Say, how do you think these butlers get rich? They take a percentage on everything that's bought for the house, from flowers to fish. Fish. That reminds me, I have to phone my boyfriend. Come on. Oh, Roxton. Yes, madam? There'll be two more for dinner tonight. That makes 18. Be sure everything's in perfect order. Yes, madam. Gorgeous. Hello. Leave it for Madam. Oh, thanks. I'll take him right up to her. Say, you're new, aren't you? Well, I'm not old. I haven't seen you before. And I don't miss much. Is that so? What's your night off? Tonight. Swell. How about a dance tonight? I'll let you know tomorrow. Come here. Hey, sweetness. wait a minute. Enough of that. Go on, get out of here. Listen, I'm not taking any orders from you. When you're in this house, you're in my territory. Oh, yeah? Possibly you have forgotten that little incident. The night you took the town car without permission and smashed it up. Go on, get out. Oh, Ellen. Yes, sir. In future, if any of the staff annoy you, report it to me. Very good, The point sir. is I will not tolerate any misconduct whatsoever. Oh, by the way, Ellen, come here. I'm not at all satisfied with the way my room is being done. I think I should like you to look after it. Well, Mr. Roxton, I... I'd rather not do your room. But, my dear child, if one is in service, it's not a question of what one would rather do, it's a question of what one must do, if one wishes to continue working. That's all. Yes, sir.
Roberts asked me to bring these up to you, madam. Oh, yes. Open them, please. Sit. Hello? Hello, darling. I'm sorry about tonight, dear. I won't be able to get down. Important conference with the Philadelphia crowd. Oh, Perry, that's rather a nuisance. Leaves me high and dry with 18 for dinner. It can't be helped, dear. I'm working like a dog. All right, dear, I understand. Bye. Oh, heavens, it's wrinkled, and I wanted to wear it tonight. Well, I can press it for you, Mrs. Winfield. Can you? Well, you're a new girl, aren't you? Yes, madam. What's your name? Ellen. All right, Ellen. Please be quick. Yes, certainly. You've done this very nicely, Ellen. Thank you. How long have you been here? A month today. Ellen, let me see your teeth. Oh, very nice. I've had a lot of trouble with my personal maids. One was a kleptomaniac. Another wanted to be a tap dancer. And the last one was always asking for a day off to go to the dentist. <laughs> Thank goodness you won't need many days off for the dentist. Oh, thank you, madam. Hello, Frederick. Glad to ah. see you, sir. Welcome home, Mr. Richard. How are you, Roxon? Very well, thank you, sir. You're looking very fit, sir. If I were any fitter, they'd have to put me in a straitjacket. Hello, Gracie. How are you? Hello, Mr. Richard. It's good to see you home again. Thank you. Where's Mother? She's upstairs. OK. Come on, boy. Say, Gracie, who's that? That's Winfield Jr. He lives here. Oh. Not a bad idea, eh? Mm -hmm. Go on, clean your bird cages. Maggie! <laughs> oh, darling! <laughs> the world's most attractive woman. Well, you're not so repulsive yourself, and now tell me, did you pass your exam? All of them. Oh, I really worked this year. Look mm. at these gray hairs. <laughs> yes, I see them. <laughs> Hamlet! Hello, Hamlet. <laughs> Remind me to order a dozen plank steaks for your luncheon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of food, you're going to have a hundred guests for supper tonight. Oh, Dickie, why didn't you let me know? I didn't know myself until this morning. I sent a telegram to everyone in Greater Manhattan, including Brooklyn and the Bronx. Yes, you would. <laughs> All right, I'll phone the caterer. What shall it be? Champagne cup and cold supper? No, a cold supper and a hot orchestra. Huh? All right, darling, anything <laughs> you say. <laughs> an errand to do for Mrs. Winfield. Have you seen her? Yeah, she's in the living room. Oh, thanks, Gracie. Okay. Hello there. Oh, good evening. What are you wandering around out here for? The party's in there. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I, I know. It doesn't matter if you're not dressed. Half of them aren't anyway. Come on, we're wasting time. Oh, I can't go in there. All right, it's too crowded anyway. We'll dance out here. Oh, but really, I... Thank you for the dance. Well, it was fun while it lasted, wasn't it? You know, this may sound silly, but I don't know who you are. Not that it really makes any difference. Doesn't it? No, not at all. I discovered you myself. That's the smartest thing I've done this evening. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, just as a matter of statistics, you know. Who are you? Who am I? You really want to know? Uh-huh. I'm your mother's maid. Excuse me, please. Big pardon, sir. Big pardon, sir. Your guests are going into supper. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Ross. Yes, what is it? Oh, your wages. Yes, sir. There you are. I want to ask you a favor, sir. What? 
I'm in trouble, sir, and I... Uh, well, I... I was wondering if you, you wouldn't be good enough to let me pay you five dollars this month instead of ten. For what reason? My wife's in the hospital. They're going to operate on her Saturday. And I need every cent I can get. I'm sorry, Graham. You know the rules. Oh, good evening. Mr. Roxton. Well, Ellen. You're looking very smart this evening. Thank you. Rather a bit of luck for you, eh? Promoted to Mrs. Winfield's personal maid. <laughs> and you get 90 a month now. Thank you. How much do I give to you? Oh, nothing. You keep it. You may need it for something. Oh, no, I'd rather do what the other servants do. Ellen. I told you I was going to make an exception of you. After all, you're an exceptional girl. That dress is most becoming to you. I suppose you're going into the city. Yes. This is my night out. No, there's no particular hurry, is there? Well, I... There are several things I want to talk to you about. Won't you sit down? Brandy? No, thank you. No, but this is very special, Brandy. I think you'll like it. No, thank you. Really, I don't care for it. I'm interested in you, my dear. Very much interested. Oh. Well, thank you. I, uh, I, I've tried to do my work as well as I could. I want you to... Uh, I want you to get ahead. In every way. Yes, who is it? Excuse me. Uh, come on, honey. We'll miss that bus. Uh, yeah, I, I have to go now. Uh, good night. Yeah, good night, boss. Pleasant dreams. Good night. Phew, boy, that was a narrow escape. Hey, this is the first blind date I've ever had. Hope that boyfriend of yours brings someone who can really dance. Well, the last time he brought a corporal of the Marines and he was as handsome as Gable. And Gable ain't bad. I'll say not. <laughs> I beg your pardon, miss. I think you dropped this back there. Oh, gee, I didn't even know I dropped it. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, that's all right. I, I thought you might like to have it back. No, I'll say I would. Well, uh, would you like to dance? Oh. Oh, no thanks, really. You see, I, I, I'm waiting for someone. Oh, I see. <laughs> hey, that was awful nice of him. My whole month's salary's in there. Oh, you were lucky that time. I'll take care of it. Ah, <laughs> oh, there he is. Hey, Smiley, come on. Hi. Oh, uh, hello, Smiley. Hi, Gracie. Well, here we are. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Don't bother to get up, dear. <laughs> <laughs> this is the girlfriend I was telling you about, Miss Ellen Neal. Hello, little lady. How do you do? Smiley Watson's the name. Any friend of Gracie's is three for two with me. You see? Sit right down. <laughs> Have I got a surprise for you? Hey, Gusso, come here. Hi, Gus. Girls, meet Gus Vilovich, champion wrestler of the Navy. Gus, say hello to the girls. Go on, say hello. Hello. Boy, small as a whip. Sit right down, Gus. Come on, sit down, boy. Come on, Gus. Turn on the old personality and liven up the party. This will say something. Ah, oh, come on, Gus. Say something. Oh, say something. <laughs> For heaven's sake, say something. Hello. <laughs> Is that marvelous? Never told him what to say. Smart as a whip. <laughs> Just made it up like that. A trigger mine, yeah, that's what yeah. he is. A trigger mine. Hiya, kiddies. Hey, can I have a dance? Who, oh, with me? Hmm. No, not you. I mean you, baby. Wait a minute, buddy. This is my party and this is my sweetheart. Hi, hon. Wait a minute, son. I don't want to appear too tolerant or even too convalescent. But I'm not going to stand here and have you tolerate me. And I'm the guy that can do it. 
Now scram. Oh, now listen, itsy bitsy. Itsy bitsy? Will you wait a minute? All I want to do is dance with the dame. Dame? Are you going to let him get away with that? Who, me? Yeah, you. Not me. <laughs> You've got so. Take him. Do something. And don't say hello. Central, get the boys. Pinky, come on. Pinky, come on, boys, everybody. Take him, take him, take him. I beg your pardon, miss. Is there anything wrong? Yes, plenty. Well, I saw that fight start in the dance hall, and I saw that you were mixed up in it. I wondered if you were hurt. No, I'm not hurt. But someone stole every cent of money I had. I wouldn't go back in there if I were you. It's turned into a riot. Yes, I know, but I've got to find my money. I haven't a cent, and I've got to get home. Well, that's OK. I'll be glad to help you. There's my car. Oh, well, I, I, that's awfully nice of you, but I, I, I couldn't do that. You see, I don't know you. Well, that makes us even. I don't know you either. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get the cop on the corner to introduce us. <laughs> well, uh, well, really, would you be nice enough to drive me home? Well, of course. That's what I've been trying to tell you. All right. Grandma home? Yes, but she's home. Hello, Grandma. Hello, Jimmy. Well, <laughs> how's Trick? Uh, Grandma, uh, I want you to meet the future Mrs. Coakley. Oh, really? You, you mustn't believe that. Oh, well, dearie, pleased to meet you anyhow. You see, I was driving Miss Neal home and uh, happened to be passing by your place, so I thought we'd drop in for a little while. Well, that is nice of you, Jimmy. Suppose you take the little lady into the parlor. Thanks, Grandma. I'll join you immediately, dearie. You run along with Jimmy. Well, uh, make yourself comfortable. Have a seat. <laughs> Thank you. How about a little music? Mm-hmm. Cigarette? No, thanks. I don't smoke. Okay, Lulu. Okay. I don't think I should have come here. I want you to take me home now, please. Oh, don't be like that. The evening's still young. Here, try a little of this. There's nothing like champagne. Bottoms up. Who did you say lived here? My grandmother. Your grandmother? Oh, she's a great old gal. You'll love her when you get better acquainted with her. Oh, Jimmy, I want to see you a moment. Don't go away. I'll be right back. What is it? What do you want? Now, listen, I told you before, I will not have you bringing strangers here, especially dames. 
They talk too much. Ah, oh, she doesn't know what time it is. But if you're worried, I won't take her in the gambling rooms. We'll have a couple of drinks and then we'll blow. It's the cops. It's a raid. You better get out of here quick. Two men upstairs. Five men in that room. Come on out of there, sister. No, you can't arrest me. I haven't done anything. Come on, let's get going. Don't, don't. Let me go. Come on now, get out of here. Hello? Mr. Roxton? Oh, Mr. Roxton, something terrible has happened to me. An accident? No, no, I'm not hurt, but I, I went dancing and, well, there was a terrible mix-up. It wasn't my fault, but I've been arrested. I, I lost all my money, and so I can't pay my fine. They're going to put me in jail. Oh. Well, what do you expect me to do about it? Well, I, I didn't know who else to go to. I, I thought maybe you'd help me. I see. All right. I'll be along in an hour. You know, I still can't believe it happened. To think that a perfectly harmless evening could turn out like that. You do believe me, don't you? Of course, my dear. But you must admit that being arrested is a very serious matter. If it were found out, you'd never get another job, you know. I don't know how to thank you for helping me. I've tried to make it clear to you, Ellen that I have your interests at heart. Oh, by the way, my dear, I suppose you know the family are leaving for Maine the day after tomorrow. They're going up to that camp for the summer. Of course, none of the staff goes with them. Maids and footmen will be laid off until September. However, I'm keeping you on. Thank you. It will be very pleasant without so many people around. Gracie, I've got the most wonderful news for you. Don't tell me Roxton's got smallpox. <laughs> no, but it's Roxton I'm looking for. Come on. Well, what? Mr. Roxton. Yes? We're leaving, Gracie and I. Right away. Leaving? <laughs> but I told you, you were staying here for the summer. Oh, no, we're going to Maine with family. <laughs> going to Maine? Mm -hmm. I gave no such orders. I've just talked with Mrs. Winfield, and she asked me to tell you. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, yes. Quite wonderful, I'm sure. I knew you'd think so. Come on, Gracie. <laughs> oh, goodbye. What are you doing? Oh, yes. That's enough. Wonderful up here. Just smell that fresh air. Not me. I'm afraid of fresh air. Why, it'd take you six months to get it out of your lungs. Take my grandfather, for instance. He lived in Flatbush for 65 years and never had a window open. Then he marries a gymnasium teacher, and on their wedding night, she opens up a window, he gets pneumonia and croaks. Not for me. Say, Gracie, who is that? Oh, uh, that's the girl they want young Winfield to marry. Oh. She's coming up here next month. She's pretty. Mm, she'll do in a pinch. <laughs> Hello there. Good morning. Have you seen Mrs. Winfield? Yes, uh, she just went down to the village. Oh. How do you like it up here in the wild by now? Oh, I love it. It's uh, kind of lonesome sometimes, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Of course, there's a 
movie theater down in the village where they show all the latest pictures. Huh? Next week, they're running Birth of a Nation. <laughs> Maybe we could drive down some night, huh? Well, you know I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, because this is your house and I'm only a servant in it. Remember me? Name is Winfield. How do you do, Mr. Winfield? How are you? Hey, how's the water? Oh, it's lovely. Looks it. Two cents I'd jump in with you, clothes and all. You'd better not. Why not? Because this is the hour that's reserved for the servants to go swimming. Oh, I see. That's a very gentle hint that I'm intruding, huh? Oh, no, of course not. Only... Let me tell you something. You've got a lot of old-fashioned ideas. In this day and age, we believe in social equality. I'll believe in it, too, when I'm able to hire servants. Look, will you do me a favor? What? Stop reminding yourself that you're working for my family. Well, uh... You know, it's just an accident that I'm not working for your family. If luck had gone the other way, I might have been your chauffeur. Who knows? Hey, incidentally, you know, I think I'd make a pretty handy man around the house. <laughs> and so there's no more of that nonsense. Right? Right. Hey! I can't stay here much longer. I'm frozen stiffer than a cold store is duck. Well, go on, get out of the water. That's just the point. I can't. I floated out of my bathing suit. Oh, say, so you better go on. You don't want that girl to freeze, do you? Say, maybe you need a little thawing out yourself. Come on. <laughs> oh, I don't... Come on. Hey, Thank you. Come on. Here, you. You try it. No, no, I don't think I want Come it. Come on, it's very easy. Go ahead, take the gun. Well, what do I do now? Well, this thing here goes right against your shoulder. Right up here, you yeah. see what I mean? Yeah, I got it. All right, then. Now what? Well, then this finger, what is it? Here. This finger here goes on the trigger. Yeah. No, 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 in, inside. Right oh, in there. oh the trigger, yeah, I see. Yeah, then, um, then you, uh, look down the barrel, this long thing, and you sight over the end, that little yeah, thing. Yeah, I see it. See what I mean? Yeah. Now what I do, pull the trigger? Oh, no, no, you don't pull the trigger at all. You squeeze very gently. Yeah? Very gently. I think you better let me do the squeezing. All right. <clears throat> you ready? Ready. Hold your breath. I'm holding it. Oh, here, you take it. I don't want it. Hey, wait a minute. Here, try it again. Oh, come no, on. no more of that for me. Oh, uh, come uh. on, come on. No, Andy. besides, I gotta go now. Anyway. Now, what's your hurry? Well, I, uh, I'd be back by four o'clock. But Mother doesn't need you. It's very easy. Now, really. wait a minute. You're forgetting it's your family that's having the vacation. I'm only here to do what I'm told. Well, then, do what you're told. Sit down. Yes, sir. Now, I have some complaints to make. About me, sir? Yes, about you. Oh, but, sir, I've been working very hard. Too hard. That's what I'm complaining about. Now, uh, Thursday's your day off, isn't it? Yes, sir. All right. After this, I want you to take Tuesdays and Saturdays, too. And Sundays, and every evening. Oh, my, but you're a hard-hearted man, Mr. LeCree. <laughs> <laughs> Helen.
music isn't doing me any good. Let's hop in the boat and go on over to the dance hall. In this little outfit? Oh, take off the apron. You look like something out of Vogue. <laughs> I couldn't be seen in public with you. You know that. Well, we haven't many more nights up here. I just found out yesterday that we're leaving the end of the week. College begins next Thursday. Oh, it's been heavenly up here. I'm going to miss it. You know, Dick, ever since I was a little girl, I, I've always been sad when my birthday comes around. That means that summer's over. You don't mean that today's your birthday? Mm hmm. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I was born in September, too. Were you? Uh huh. Now we have something in common, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Come here a minute. Dick, tell me something. Yes. No, I mean something else. Oh, when you do that, how do you expect me to remember what I'm talking about? Well, then don't talk. No, seriously. It's about that girl. The one who was supposed to come up here last month. I had Mother call her off. <laughs> Darling, don't you know by this time that there's no one else? Yes, Miss Winfield. Oh, Ellen, I'm sorry to spoil your evening out, but there are some things I want you to do. Yes, ma'am. Suppose you start by opening those boxes. Yes, sir. You don't mind working tonight, do you, Ellen? Well, no, ma'am. Yes, that's right. Now hold it up so I can see. Mm-hmm. It'll do. You'll look very pretty in it. I. It's my birthday present for you. Oh. Oh, that's so nice of you, Mrs. Winfield. How'd you know it was my birthday? I heard the cook ordering 18 candles for your cake. Oh, you're so sweet and thoughtful of me. Oh, nonsense, child. You deserve it. Thank you, madam. Don't forget the hat. A hat? Charming. <laughs> now, hurry and dress if you're going out tonight. Oh, but I thought you wanted me to work tonight. Surely you don't think I'd have you work on your birthday. Oh, thank you. I'm sure your best boy will find you irresistible tonight. <laughs> there is a best boy, I suppose. Ye yes, there is. One of the town boys? <clears throat> well, don't let yourself be fooled by these summer resort romances. You're too nice a girl. All right, dear, that's all. Good night. Good night. Have a grand time. Yes, thank you. Good night. Dick! Remember me? <laughs> How do you like it? Well, where did you get that? Your mother gave it to me for a birthday present. She did, huh? Well, if my mother can give you a birthday present, so can I. <laughs> oh, darling, be 
You sit right there. Dick, where are we going? Going over to that dance across the lake. Darling. Now listen. I've got to go back and finish my senior year. Yes. And I'd like to think that you'd be waiting for me. Then when I've graduated, we'll go to my family and I'll say, well, here we are. How about that old parental blessing? I know that they're going to be just as proud of you as I am. Well, that's a very sweet speech and I love you for it. Don't you see it? It wouldn't work out, ever. It couldn't. Why not? Your family. They're modern, broad-minded people. Well, I know your mother's the sweetest woman I've ever known. She's very fond of you. As her maid, yes. But she wouldn't be if I suddenly walked in as her daughter-in-law. Believe me, Dick, I know what I'm talking about. Well, if that worries you, darling, forget my family. We can get along without them. Do you them. think I'd let you do that? <laughs> no, I love you too much. Then why not? I'm talking about love, Dick. You're talking about marriage. I... I, I couldn't marry you because... Well, it, it would just be a mistake. That's all. Hazel, come here. When are you planning to do your share of this silver? I don't have to do the silver. Oh, you don't? Well, Mr. Roxton told me I needn't. Mr. Roxton, eh? Well, just because you're stuck on him is no... Get up that. Hazel, you'll take your orders from me. Thanks, Mr. Roxton. Listen to me, Mr. Roxton. I'm used to running my kitchen to suit myself. We live to learn, Mrs. Frisbee. In this house, you'll run your kitchen to suit me. Well, son, I'd like to hear from you once in a while, even when you're not asking for money. Well, somebody's got to help you spend oh. it. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Drive carefully, won't you? Bye-bye, Maggie, and be a good girl. Mm -hmm. See you on Thanksgiving. You may see me before that. Bye, Roger. Bye, Come on, Hamlet. I was so afraid you were going without saying goodbye. Oh, <laughs> 
from. <laughs> you see, he loves you, too. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave him with you. Oh, but Dick, what'll they say? What's the difference? The point is, I want him to keep an eye on you. He'll give me a report on everything you do. Oh, I hate to see you go. I'll be thinking about you, darling. Oh, that's so easy to say now, Dick. You'll be seeing so many pretty girls. Uh, they may be there. But I won't see them. I'll write to you every day. We only have a minute, darling. Hold me close. I better go now. We won't say goodbye. Well, he's gone, Father. I hope we don't miss him too much. Who is it? It's I. Yes? There's something important I have to say to you. chance to see you alone. There are always so many stupid people around. Ellen. Please go. Don't be a fool. Why, Gracie's right in the next room. I happen to know it's Gracie's night off. Are you out of your mind? Possibly. Thanks to you. You know, you've become an obsession with me. All these months you've avoided me as if you hated me. Very well, then suppose you do hate me. Sometimes that makes it more interesting. I don't want to talk about it. Please go. When I go, you're going with me. Ellen, I want to marry you. Marry me? Oh, I've got money, plenty of it. I've been getting mine for years. And I've been waiting, waiting for someone like you. You're not like these other servants. You've got breeding, class. I knew it the moment I saw you. I've had my eye on you ever since. I've watched you constantly, even when you didn't know you were being watched. You're everything I want. Oh, but that's impossible. I'm in love with someone else. I'll make you forget him, whoever he is. Oh, please! <laughs> I think I'm beginning to understand. Realize what you're saying? Certainly I do. Are you positive of this? Of course I am. I've been watching her all fall. Get my coat.
Not a word of this to anyone. You understand? Okay. Beg pardon, sir. There's something rather serious I must tell you. Well, what is it? If you don't mind, sir, it's something that concerns the good of the household. Oh, come on, Roxton, don't make a mystery out of it. I'm sorry to inform you, sir, that uh, one of the maids is a... Uh... Well, what about one of the maids? Is she frightened by a mouse or what? No, sir. She's going to have a baby. A baby? You don't mean... Yes, sir. Oh, poor girl. Roxton, which one is it? This will distress you particularly, madam. You've been very kind to the girl. Not... not Ellen? Yes, madam. Oh, I can't believe it. Unfortunately, madam, it's true. We'll give her two weeks' wages and let her go. But, Perry, this isn't any ordinary servant. I've gotten to know the girl. I've grown fond of her. My dear, you're not proposing to turn our pantry into a nursery. Give her two weeks' wages and discharge her. Yes, sir. Roxton, you'll do nothing of the sort. Send Ellen to me. Very good, madam. Why talk to her? I don't suppose you've ever made a mistake in your life. You're the perfect husband. Yes, madam. Ellen, I can't tell you how sorry I am we have to do this. Really, I... I... <laughs> well, I hardly know what to say to you. What she's trying to say is we understand you're in difficulty. What have you been saying about me? What I said was for the good of Mr. Winfield's household. Roxton, I'd like to speak with Ellen alone. Yes, madam. Ellen, sit down. Yes, madam. Is there... Is there anything you want to tell me? I, uh... Come on, answer us. Harry. Is what Roxton said true? I have nothing to be ashamed of. I'm married. Oh, you're married. That's a convenient story. Who are you married to? I, I... I can't tell you. Ellen, you say you have nothing to be ashamed of. Then why can't you tell us who your husband is? Oh, Mrs. Winfield, I just can't. Oh, what's the use of arguing with her? I won't tolerate this sort of thing among the servants. If you can't prove you're married, you'll have to go. Very well, sir. Ellen. You know you can trust me. Please, you're only making it harder. Oh, just a minute. I was prepared to treat you with every courtesy. Give you your wages, perhaps even a good reference. But all this mystery only makes me more suspicious. Why? What do you mean? I'm just a little too intelligent to be taken in by it. You'll pack your things and leave tonight. Oh, Perry, please. I mean what I say. Let her alone. You can't talk to her that way. Can't you see she's only trying to protect somebody? Gracie. No, I'm going to tell her. You want to know who her husband is? Gracie, shut up. It's your son. Is this another one of your tricks? There's no trick to it. Every word I've told you is the truth. Get out of here. Go on, Gracie, please. Go on. Well, all right. I'll wait for you outside. Oh, Mrs. Winfield, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't want to tell you like this. I hope you don't hate me. You see, Dick and I do love each other, and... The whole thing's a lie. I don't believe you're married. It's not a lie. It's the truth. Dick and I were married in Maine on the 3rd of September. Ellen, will you leave us alone for a moment, please? Yes, certainly, madam. Well, this is a fine mess. So he's married. Blasted young fool. And to a servant. Oh, don't carry on like a Spanish grandee. Let's try to look at this thing sensibly. Ellen's a perfectly decent girl. You mean you'd accept her? We couldn't do otherwise. After all, she's Dick's wife. Beg pardon, sir. There's something further I feel it my duty to tell you. Haven't you told us about enough for one evening? I am acting solely in your interest, sir, because of my loyalty to the family and my affection for Mr. Richard. I've no choice but to tell you all I know. It must be obvious to you, sir, that the girl engineered this marriage merely for one purpose, to obtain money from you. It's a perfect arrangement for blackmail, sir. Nonsense. Ellen wouldn't do such a thing. Ellen Neal has a police record, madam. A police record? What did I tell you? 
Broxton, do you realize what you're saying? Yes, madam. Oh, please, Ellen. Grace, you may go. Ellen, I want you to tell me the truth. Were you ever arrested? Yes, I was, but you see, it was all a mistake. I... It was not a mistake. She was arrested and held. Her name can be found on the police blotter. I paid the fine myself. But... I have a receipt here. Well, what do you think of that? Mrs. Winfield, you've always tried I'm to... I'm sorry, Ellen, but this rather changes everything. Look here, young woman. I'm going to be very generous in this situation. I'll give you $5,000 to settle. I don't want your money. I wouldn't take anything from you. The only thing I want to do is get out of this house. I hope I never see any of you again. You're treating me like a criminal just because I love your son. No, I'm not good enough for him. I'm only good enough to have his baby. <laughs> If you'll permit me, sir, I shall see to it that she causes you no further annoyance. Dinner is served, madam. Hello, Harold. You go stay here. Go on. And that's the facsimile of the police blotter. Yeah, but it might be a mistake. There's no mistake about this. Look, there's the receipt Roxton got when he paid her fine. You don't understand. I love Ellen. I'm going to stick to her. I don't care what anybody says. But, darling, we're only doing this for your own good. The whole thing will be cleared up as soon as I talk to her. Well, she's gone. You sent her away? No, she ran away because she realized the game was up. Did you offer her money? Yes, $5,000. She didn't take it, did she? No. Of course she didn't. Doesn't that prove she's on the level? If she were the type you think, she'd have stayed here and held you up for plenty. Why, it's all part of a very smooth scheme. She knew she'd get more sympathy and more money if she waited till the baby was born. Baby. Dick, do you mean to say you didn't know? She didn't tell me. Do you think I'd have left her? She made me go back to college. She wouldn't take any money. How do you see what you've done? Where did she go? We don't know. Roxton? Roxton? Yes, sir. Do you know where Ellen went? Uh, no, sir. And she said nothing to the other servants. Well, her friend Gracie, where is she? I regret to say, sir, that Gracie has also left. I'm going to find Ellen. Don't be a fool. If you leave it to me, I'll get you out of this mess. Whatever mess there is, you've made. Dick! Excuse me, sir. If any letter should come from Miss Ellen addressed to your son, uh, what are my instructions? Roxton, I didn't hear a word you said. I understand, sir. Gee, honey, you had a pretty tough time of it, didn't you? 
By the way, who are these people you're staying with? They're some friends of mine from back home. They say I can stay here until I get on my feet again. Oh, that's swell. You know, things are picking up with me, too. I've got a job. Oh, Gracie, that's marvelous. What are you doing? I'm a ladies' room attendant in a gas station. All the work's a little bohemian, but you meet lots of interesting people. Oh, I almost forgot. Here's a present for the kids. <laughs> oh, Gracie, you shouldn't have done that. You've done so much for me already, I don't know how I'm ever going to pay you back. Shut up. Oh, Gracie, isn't that darling? Look at the size of it. I hope it fits. <laughs> Looky. And here's something for the little canary, too. Oh, thanks. I haven't seen this. Say, hey, you're awful lucky getting all this. Uh, no. Now, there's a bright idea. <laughs> what would a baby be doing with an umbrella, stupid? <laughs> well, it might rain. Ellen Neal? It's her, all right. It sure is. A letter for you, Miss Neal. What's the matter? Anything wrong? Why, Ellen, what's wrong? Let me see that. Well, how do you like that from their lawyers? Dear madam, this is to inform you that on behalf of our client, Mr. Richard Winfield, we are starting immediate legal procedure to annul your marriage on grounds of fraud. We suggest that you have your attorney consult with us at the earliest possible date. Well, they're cockroaches. Ellen, if they annul your marriage on grounds of fraud, do you know what that makes your baby? Oh, Gracie, they wouldn't do that. They couldn't. Oh, they couldn't, eh? They've got money. They can do anything. Helen, there's just one thing for you to do. Fight back. Oh, yes. Yes, of course I will. But how? I got just the guy. Sam Stapp, the mouthpiece. That's his lawyer. And a good lawyer. Quiet. How quick can we get in touch with him? Where's the telephone? It's in the grocery store four miles down the road. Come on. Right, let's, let's get go. going. Let's Hurry go. up. Wait, I get my But you've got to go through with it. Are you going to let these Winfields drag you into court, treat you like a burglar? Well, I just can't believe that they could do such a thing. Jack, why, he's the one who's suing you. Oh, listen, don't tell me you're still chump enough to believe he had no part in this. Why, he's just as much to blame as his whole family. What about those letters you sent him? Did he ever answer you? Well, no, but... Did he ever try to see you? No, why, you never heard a word from him. Now, listen to me, little lady. They're going to sue you for an annulment. Okay, we'll slap back a countersuit at him so fast it'll make him dizzy. But the first thing we got to do is to establish you as Mrs. Richard Winfield. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, you've been living in the country uh, incognito. Quiet, Sam will do the talking. Now, look, you've been living out on that farm as Mrs. Smith. Well, that won't do at all. What we got to do is to bring you to town and set you up in a first-class apartment as Mrs. Winfield. Apartment? Nothing. Make it a penthouse. Oh, but I couldn't. Who'd pay for it? <laughs> That's a hot one. Say, there's a million women in this town who would do anything short of murder to be in your shoes. Who's going to pay for it? Why, the Winfields, of course. <laughs> well, Dick, we can't go ahead till you sign this complaint. I won't sign it. I didn't know anything about an annulment. Darling, please believe that what we're doing is for your good. Yeah, a lot you care about my good. Haven't you hurt us enough staying away all these months? All this chatter is getting us nowhere. It may bring you to your senses to really see what a smart little gold digger you've married. You mean you found her? Roxton located her. Where is she? She's living at 772 Park Avenue, sir. Park Avenue? In an apartment that costs a thousand dollars a month, and you're supposed to pay the rent. And I'll tell you something else she's done. She's gone all over town, running up bills, charging them to you. Look at that, over eight thousand dollars worth of bills, all charged to Mrs. Richard Winfield. Have you got the money to pay them? She wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, wouldn't she? Suppose you run up to 772 Park Avenue and see for yourself. Come on, break it up, honey. Don't be so sad. You know the old saying, what's good for the goose is, is good for... <laughs> hey, come on, take a drink. This will either pick you up or knock you down. I don't know which. No, thanks, Manny. I'll oh. take it. 
Mm. You'll take anything. Nothing bothers me but a Mickey. That's a good idea. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on, sweet. Well, Mrs. Winfield, you're a success. Just look at that publicity we're getting. Well. Oh, boy. I think it's disgusting. No, honey, you're not turning softy on us, are you? No, but I'm sorry we started this whole mess in the first place. Mrs. Winfield? Yes? Mr. Winfield's here. Dick! Uh, no, I, uh, I can't see him. Can't? Just a minute. You're not going to see him. I thought you had some backbone. Oh, but Gracie, You I... let him bust up your whole life. After all you've been through, he sneaks around and sues you to annul your marriage. Why, I'd give that heel a blast, he'd never get over. But you haven't got the nerve, even for your kids. All right. Ask Mr. Winfield to step in. Will you step in, please? Thank you. Ellen, I'd, uh, I'd like to speak to you alone. Anything you have to say to me, you can say in front of my friends. All right. I want to ask you one question. Yes? Is it true that you were arrested last spring in a raid? Yes. What about it? I guess they were right. That makes me pretty stupid, doesn't it? That uh, annulment paper, have you still got it? Yes, it's right here. All right, let's have it. I'm ready to sign. I thought you'd see it our way. That's a sensible thing to do. Bring him in. I wish you'd tell me what this is all about. I haven't done Shut anything. Shut up! Is this the guy? Yes. Do you know this little lady? Why, yes, I... Well, she's got a lawsuit coming up, and we want you as our witness. You'll uh, testify, won't you? Well, I'll do anything that I can. Fine. Now, our case comes up Monday. When we get you into court, I want you to get up on that witness stand and tell exactly what happened. <laughs> the Winfield home as a maid, you knew they had a son, didn't you? No. You must have known they had money. I objected on it. On the grounds that the question is irrelevant, incompetent, and immaterial. Objection sustained. You were not a servant before you entered the Winfield home, were you? No. But you became a servant for the deliberate purpose of attracting their son, didn't you? That's a lie. You tricked young Winfield into marrying you. I object. Objection sustained. Trying to get money from the Winfields, aren't you? I'm not trying to get anything for myself, only for my baby. I didn't ask the Winfields for money. They never would have heard from me if they hadn't sent me word they were going to have my marriage annulled. I don't care what they did to me, but I won't have them hurt my baby. I married Dick Winfield because I loved him. I'll always love him. That baby's mine and his, and all the money in the world can't change that. That's all. No questions. That's all. You may step down. Thank you. Call Thomas Roxton. <coughs> Thomas Roxton? Please take the stand. You're the butler in Mr. Winfield's home, aren't you? Uh, yes, sir. On the night of May 3rd last year, did you receive a telephone call from Ellen Neal from a night court in New York? I did, sir. Tell us exactly what happened. Uh, well, sir, uh, she had been arrested in a questionable resort owned and operated by a woman known as uh, Grandma Gammon. I paid her fine myself. 
Is this the receipt for Ellen Neal's fine? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Your witness? No questions. That's all. Now, don't worry. Wait till we put our witness Coakley on the stand. I'm going to blow this case higher than a kite. Call James Coakley. James Coakley. Please take the stand. What's happened? They've called him as their witness. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony which you're about to give in the case now pending before the court between Richard Winfield and Ellen Winfield be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. What is your name? James Coakley. Please relate the circumstances of your first meeting with Ellen Neal. I was sitting in my car at the corner of 45th Street and 6th Avenue. Go on. She passed by the car and uh, gave me the eye. She had a cigarette in her hand. She asked me if I had a light. We talked for a minute. I offered her a lift home. She got in the car. Then in common slang, it's what you'd call a pickup. I object on the grounds that the question calls for a conclusion on the part of the witness. Objection overruled. Proceed. I suggested we go to a dance hall, but she said she had a better idea. So she took me to a little private club in 47th Street. What kind of place was it? I didn't like the looks of it. Did Miss Neal act as though she'd been there before? Mm -hmm. She seemed to know her way around. She ordered champagne. And then? Well, we drank the champagne and then went over and sat on the couch. That's enough. Your witness. No questions. Plenty press. You may step down. Your Honor, I wish to place Alan Winfield on the stand. Mrs. Winfield, do you know this man, James Coakley? Yes. Well, on the night in question, how old were you? I, uh, I was 17. Are you positive? Uh, yes. That's all. Your Honor, you've heard the evidence. This girl was only 17 years of age. I ask a warrant for James Coakley's arrest. Your Honor, I ask for a recess, for re-examination of evidence. The court will recess for 10 minutes. I can't take that rap. You've got to get me out of this. I wouldn't have got you in it if I'd known the girl was underage. We'll think of something. But you can't let me be the goat. You'll have to buy the girl off. We can't do that. You got me into this. You told me I'd be taken care of. You got your money, didn't you? If you don't get me out of it, I'll go out there and tell them the truth. If you do, they'll get you for perjury. Perjury? That's nothing. This means a stretch up the river. You took that chance, didn't you? Mr. Winfield, you've got to help me. You've got to get me out of this. They'll send me up the river and I'm not guilty. I lied out there. I'm not guilty, I tell you. I never had anything to do with that girl. What? No, never, so help me. He promised me that if I'd go through with this, he'd see that I was taken care of. Wait a minute. You mean to say that he got you to do this? Yes, yes. I was a witness on her side, and he paid me money to switch my testimony. Did you pay him to change his testimony? Yes, but I did it in the best interest of yourself and the family, Mr. Richard. <laughs> plaintiff in this case, I beg leave to speak. This is most irregular. You'll have to address the court through your attorney. What I have to say, no attorney could say for me. I object to this procedure. This is supposed to be a court of justice, and a great wrong has been done. Not to me, as these lawyers have been paid to tell you, but to my wife. I warn you, you'll be cited for contempt. I throw myself upon the mercy of this court. I ask you to dismiss the case. Find me for contempt if you want to, but I've got to tell you the truth. My family brought this action. It was cruel and unnecessary, but they thought they were doing the best thing for me. 
They accused her of fraud. Your Honor, the fraud is on the other side. I've just learned that not one of the things they've charged against her is true. I'm not blaming my family. I'm their only son. They thought they were doing the right thing. When they learned that I was married to a girl working in their own household, it was only natural that they should try to protect me. I understand completely why they did it. But they were wrong. They're trying to break up a marriage which they say is based on social inequality. It is based on social inequality. Your Honor, I'm not worthy of being Ellen Neal's husband. I'm afraid I've been pretty stupid. She's the only one who will come out of this whole rotten muddle with clean hands. I only hope that someday she'll forgive me. That she'll really know how terribly much I love her. Today you heard me tell the whole world how much you mean to me. I meant every word of it. Do you want me to tell you again? I'll never stop telling. 